Okay, guys, I hope you all had a very lovely Christmas. I was too busy thinking about the next project and since I wasn't really sure what it was going to be, I decided that maybe I would do certain peripheral items that I make for my amigurumi and keep them in separate videos for reference. So this video, for example, is going to be more of a tutorial um, reference-ish material and I'll set up a playlist for these kinds of videos as I do more. For today, I'll start my reference playlist with a miniature cardigan. For the project, I'm going to be using these two different colours of yarn because I think they'll show up best on camera. So this is the mint green and the darker green. I will link the actual colours and numbers and brand in the description box below. But you can use whatever colour you want to. I'd suggest also using a variegated yarn as I think that would work really well in most cases but for the purposes of this video I'll stick to my chosen solid colour. You will also need a crochet hook, a tapestry needle and some scissors. The cardigan I'm making is a hexagon cardigan and it only works with the granny stitch. <laughs> Go ahead ask me how I know. Well I spent a weekend making hexagons and they just didn't work until I used granny stitch. So anyway, that aside, you will want to begin with a magic circle. So into that magic circle, chain 3, which counts as a double crochet, and do 2 more double crochet into the same magic circle. Chain 2, then do 3 double crochet into the circle again. Repeat that four more times, then chain two and slip stitch into the third chain from the beginning of the round. At this point, you can pull the tail from the magic circle closed and that's round one complete. You should have six clusters of three double crochet separated by two chains. These chain two spaces will be the corner points of our hexagon. For all of the rounds we're going to need to be in the corners each time. So slip stitch until you reach the corner, which is the chain two space. chain three which again counts as the first double crochet then add two more double crochet into the chain space chain two and add three more double crochet into the same chain two space to form the first corner chain one insert three double crochet into the next chain two space, followed by a chain two and another three double crochet into the same chain two space. Repeat this until the end of the round. To finish the round, chain one and then slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning of the round. Slip stitch again into the corner to get ready for the next round. I will do this off camera and I will meet you at the end. So for round three, we're going to start with the corner again. So once you've slipped stitch to your corner, chain three and add two double crochet. Chain two and add three double crochet into the same chain two space to create the corner. With the corner created, now chain one and place three double crochet into the chain one space. The next is a chain two space, which is our corner. So we're going to do a chain one, three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet into the same space. chain one and repeat until the end of the round. 
finished the round again with a chain one and slip stitch into the third chain from the beginning of the round. Slip stitch into the corner to start the last round. Right, since most of my amigurumis are roughly 10 inches tall, four rounds are absolutely enough. Finish the final round in the same way we have done the previous rounds by doing three double crochet in the chain one spaces and then three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets into each corner. I'll just do that and come back just after completing the last corner, which is gonna be the fifth corner and the rest is going to be slightly different from here on out. Okay, so I've just finished the last corner of round four. Now, here you have two choices. The first is to carry on to the end of the round and slip stitch the sleeve shut, or you can do what I'm about to do, which is to use the join as you go method. So with the join as you go method, you want to align the corner you have just done to the one on the opposite side. You should get an L shape or half T when you do this. And this shape already looks like one side of the cardigan. Then after the corner, instead of doing a chain one, I'm going to slip stitch into the opposite chain one space. This joins the two sides together. Next, I carry on as usual and do three double crochets into the next chain space of the side I'm working on. Slip stitch again into the chain one space on the opposite side and then do three double crochet into the next chain one space then slip stitch into the chain space on the opposite side one last time and slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning of the round. Slip stitch twice to get to the corner and then slip stitch the two corners together and chain one to finish off and then you can leave a tail to weave in later. As I mentioned earlier, you can of course just do the round as normal and leave a long tail to whip stitch the sleeves together. So that will be the seam that runs from the arm all the way up to the shoulder. If you decide to whip stitch, then don't forget to leave the inner corners unattached since they will serve as the back seam and the front of the cardigan. So you don't want to whip stitch those closed. For the other side of the cardigan, as you saw, it's literally a mirror image. So just repeat the four rounds again to get the second side and then you can whip stitch the two sides together. For the join as you go approach, I will be doing that last round differently. So if you want to do that, I will show you in a second, but I will be doing most of my second half off camera and I'll join you back just before the third corner of the fourth round. Okay, so I'm all caught up and I'm at the third corner of the fourth round. I've decided to do this side of the cardigan in the darker green because I think the colour contrast will be easier to see on camera and it will allow me to explain everything just a little bit easier. At that third corner, I just start the corner as normal with the three double crochets in the chain space and then I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to flip the mint side of the cardigan over and slip stitch into the corner of the mint side and back into the dark green. After the slip stitch, I'll do three double crochets into the chain space of the current side I'm working on again, which is the dark green.
I carry on until the end of this side and repeat the corner at this end of this current side by doing three double crochet into the corner then chain one slip stitch into the mint side corner and then double crochet three into the space of the dark green corner <laughs> oh god this this is why i use the two different colors because it can get confusing but you need to see what is happening but anyway after this carry on as normal up to the last corner and repeat the join as you go method until the end of the round The join as you go method as you can see is slightly difficult to explain with the words because you can just get them modeled up in your head it's more of a visual tutorial but I do like it because I'm left with fewer ends to weave in at the end so from here the cardigan is actually complete you can add buttons if you wish or hook and eye closures or leave it as it is you can also add a collar to it and I did play around with having a collar but um, I found that it was a little bit bulky with the weight of yarn that I'm using. So maybe I'll try that with a, a lighter weight yarn, maybe a lace yarn. I don't know, but I need to get the collar to lie down a little bit flatter, but it wasn't doing that with this, with the DK weight. But anyway, essentially the choice is yours. All that's left to do now is to weave in my tail ends with a tapestry needle and we'll be done. So I, I actually wanted to try making a me-sized version of this cardigan. I've always shied away from making wearables in crochet because I just, ah, measurements and all that just, yeah, no, I shy away from that. But I think using a variegated yarn would make this cardigan really stand out and it would work up really quickly due to using the granny stitch. So I might actually try it. It's, it this project is actually making me want to make a me sized version of it but anyway so now I guess I need to shop for a really good variegated yarn and get the me sized project started anyway guys thanks for watching please like share comment and even consider subscribing if you like the content I create don't forget to hit that bell button to be notified whenever I upload a new video and you know See you in the new year. Happy new year, guys. Enjoy the beauty shots. See you in the next one. Bye.